In the next few lessons, we will go over a few simple processes. Let's start with the isobaric processes. An isobaric process, by definition, means the pressure stays a constant in the process. For example, I have a gas-filled cylinder with a frictionless piston. The pressure inside the container would equal to the pressure here, let's say it's P, which is the pressure up here, because up here it's touching the atmosphere, so it is the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, the pressure over here for the gas is the pressure from the top, the atmospheric pressure, plus the pressure produced by the weight of the piston. If the piston has a mass M and a cross-sectional area A, the pressure from the weight of the piston would be the weight mg divided by the area, because force divided by the area gives us pressure. So the pressure inside the container would equal to this uh, pressure PO plus mg over A. I can heat the gas up, and the gas would expand and push the piston up. While the pressure of the gas inside stays the same P. So this would be an isobaric process. If we plot this process on a PV diagram, which of those lines do you think could be a match? Since the pressure is a constant, the process should be a horizontal line. So it is DB. And we usually draw an arrow to show the direction of the process. We were heating up the gas, and the volume increases. So it would be D2B. Of course, I can also cool the gas down, and it would contract, and the piston would go down, maintaining a constant pressure inside. In this case, the process would be like B2D, with decreasing volume. We can also find the work done on the gas in an isobaric process. The work done is the force times the displacement times cosine the angle between the two. Since we want the work done on the gas by the environment, we need the force on the gas by the environment. The environment pushes on the gas with this pressure P. So the force would equal to the pressure times the area. So pressure times the area, and uh, if the piston goes up by a distance d, the displacement would be that d. And what's the angle between the two? The force from the environment on the gas goes down, while the displacement goes up. So the angle between the two is uh, 180 degrees. And what is uh, the cross-sectional area a times the displacement d? The cross-sectional area times the displacement d gives us uh, this volume over here, which means uh, this is the change in volume of the gas. Because uh, a times d, the height times the base, that's the volume of this little cylinder right here. And that's the change in volume of the gas. So this gives me P times delta V times uh, cosine 180, that's negative 1. On a P versus V diagram, what do you think P times delta V represents? Since we're multiplying, that's the uh, height times the base. Pressure times the delta V, height times the base of this uh, rectangle right here. So the work done on the gas is the negative area of the PV diagram. The work done on the gas is the negative area of the PV diagram is true for any processes, not just the isobaric process. The work is negative if the graph goes to the right with increasing volume. Because when the gas expands, the force on the gas goes down when the displacement goes up. 
they are in opposite directions. So the work done is negative. When the work done on the gas is positive, if the volume decreases, because when the volume decreases, the force on the gas goes down and the displacement also goes down. If the force and the displacement are in the same direction, the work done is positive. You shall see that this method of finding work done on the gas is very useful in this unit.